What's going on everybody? Back with another football discussion video. Today I wanted to go over like my top, I think I, this is, you could count it as a top eight. I have a top six with two honorable mentions. And I just want to talk about my predictions on um, NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. Once again, these are just my opinions, my predictions. I'm not saying this is going to happen. Um, just let me know down in the comments if I missed on something, if I was right on something, you know. Oh, and by the way, this is non-QBs. This is my nine QB um, offensive rookie of the year voting, because I feel like with the QBs, like it's kind of just obvious. Like you just like Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels would be my number one and two. But in that case scenario, where I'm just gonna have no QBs, I don't know. I just wanted to make the no QBs. But let me know in your comments if you agree or disagree. And starting off, these are my honorable mentions. I don't have it written down. My first honorable mention is Malik Neighbors going to the Giants at six overall. A lot of people argue that he was better than Marvin. I thought Marvin was better. Maybe that's biased from Ohio State, but it was close. It wasn't like a landslide. And Malik Neighbors would have easily been a genera generational wide receiver in any other draft. My reason for having him in honorable mention is because the Giants are sort of in a rebuild. They, I mean, they've been in a rebuild since they've been in a rebuild for a while since Eli Manning left and, and um. Sorry, like Odell left, Saquon. I mean, Saquon, it's just hard because he had no blockers. Like Malik Neighbors' quarterback, I'm sorry, but Daniel Jones is not a good quarterback. He's like a backup quarterback. Like, that's the problem. Like, when your quarterback isn't that good, I don't think he'll have that good of a rookie year. Also, bad coaching goes into that, you know. There's a very bad line on the team. It's going to be hard for Daniel Jones to get the ball off to him, especially because he's a super good deep threat. But those deep throws, you need at least you need three or four seconds of protection for those deep throws, you know. And uh, of course, of course, I'm not saying he's going to have a bad career. I'm just saying he might have a rough couple of first seasons until the Giants get to know what they're doing, you know. So this is not anything against his game. So next, I, I kind of like this honorable mention with Joe Alt because Rashawn Slater, um, in my opinion, could have won offensive rookie of the year that year just because he was so good. He made all pro second team as a tackle. And Joel was the unanimous number one left tackle in the draft. I mean, people argued Fashanu. I don't know why the Fashanu hype kind of died down, but he's a super, super good prospect. Um, he's a two-time All-American. Usually, usually those generational left tackles are just like a one-time All-American in their senior or junior year, but he's a two-time All-American. He started every game as a freshman. And um, he honestly just looks like a cornerstone left tackle. He's got the size. He's got the movement. And I think the Chargers are just going to love him and they're going to eat him up and soak him up because I think they've been looking at for that franchise left tackle for a long time. And I'm not going to say he's going to win it, but I'm saying, you know, a couple of votes. I just kind of like him in there. But it's going to be damn near impossible to get votes in this one. You know, you got Caleb Williams, Jay, and they, you got all these freaking generational receivers. So number six, we got Worthy. The reason I have Worthy up there, it just concerns with size, you know. Like Tank Dell had a super good rookie season, but then he got hurt, you know. And I hope he's coming back soon. But I think Xavier Worthy's overshadowed by his um by his speed. He had really he had a really good sophomore year, really good junior year. He had a thousand yards, over ten touchdowns. And I think his speed and his size is kind of overshadowed like that. Like the same thing with Tank Dell. I think Xavier Worthy's gonna do the same thing as Tank Dell. They have a really good QB, a really solid team. Well, obviously the Chiefs on the fuck or excuse me. Obviously the Chiefs on the Super Bowl. So I think it's just going to be like the same thing as um, Tank Dell. You plug him in there, and for his rookie season, you know, maybe he'll reach 1K, but like 800, 900 yards, 7 TDs. It wouldn't be a surprise at all. And I, th I think he's um, the wide receiver one instantly. And obviously, he, run he ran the fastest 40 time ever. And I think the Chiefs will know how to use that because they're a really smart team. They just won the Super Bowl. Andy Reid, I think he knows what he's doing. And then obviously, you got those concerns about every injuries, but... I think it will end up okay. At fifth, we got Brian Thomas. I really like Brian Thomas. He had seven TDs in his um, at his season at LSU, which is insane. Um, I think he's just overshadowed by neighbors a lot. The reason I have him in here is because he's got Trevor Lawrence throwing the ball. Trevor Lawrence is still young. You know, that's still like a young team. And I would honestly say that he's the best wide receiver on the Jaguars right now. And so it, I wouldn't be surprising. No, I'm not saying a thousand yards, but I'm saying you know maybe that ten TDs, you know, that 800 yard season. But I really like Brian Thomas. I just think he was overshadowed by neighbors, and I think he's going to a good team with Trevor Lawrence throwing him the ball. 
Fourth, I know Malachi Cordy was a third round pick and he really wasn't well known, but he's a really good wide receiver running back prospect, like with Brees Hall. He's not on Saquon's level or Brees Hall's like um like Brees Hall's level as of right now. But what I'm thinking is the Jets will know how to use him because they have the they have Brees Hall and they showed how to use a receiving um receiving running back. And I think just this Aaron Aaron Rodgers just brings culture to this team, like I think these Jets, they these players want to play. I think Malachi Corley is going to fight for reps with Brees Hall. You know, not, not necessarily split carries, but I think he's going to fight for reps with Brees Hall. And they got Braylon Allen to get some competition in there. They got that thumper, and they got Malachi Corley, that athletic running back. And obviously, I'm not wishing anything, but Brees Hall does have those injury concerns. You know, maybe he goes down, and I'm not wishing that at all. I'm just saying, and Malachi Corley plugs in and plays, you know, and he has a great rookie year. Third, you got Romo Dunze. I don't know if it's Romeo Dunze at Romo Dunze. I listened to it, but I just like Romeo Dunze so much better. I'm sorry, guys. Ninth overall, he already has that chemistry with Caleb Williams. You know, there were those posts about seeing Caleb at the airport, you know, and they're already close with each other. I think he'd be a wide receiver one in any other draft. Excuse me. That didn't have Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison. Super good prospect. I mean, he was on one of the best. He was the best receiver on one of the best teams in college football. And I think there's a new culture in Chicago with K.O. Williams. And I think K.O. Williams is going to be giving him, feeding him a lot of targets this year. Number two, we got Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers is the best tight end in college football that I've ever witnessed. Um, I think he's instantly going to be a top, not instantly, like at the end of the year, he's going to be a top five Um tight end in the league i mean dude look at these stats as a tight end 175 receptions 200 um 2538 yards 2060s that's like a great wide receiver prospect stats i mean this dude's a tight end on a two-time championship winning team you know and honestly i think he has a raiders mentality the raiders like the raiders like to be scrappy not necessarily play dirty they like to be scrappy they sort of have that culture like it's hard to explain, but they have that Raiders culture. They kind of got that scrap in them. They got that dog in them, you know? And I think Brock Bowers has that, and I think he can bring that to the table. I also think he's instantly the second target behind Devontae. Um, I'm just hoping that Devontae stays healthy, you know? I'm hoping that he has, like, a bounce-back year. Um, and, you know, maybe Aiden O'Connell will work out. Maybe that'll work out. He looked he looked really good in those preseason games last year, and maybe he'll work out and feed Bowers a ball, feed Devontae Adams a ball. Number one, we got Marv. Obviously, we got Marv. He's the best college, um, best college wide receiver I've ever witnessed. And he's just a complete prospect. You know, he's complete. He probably would have went number one overall in any draft that didn't have Caleb Williams and Jane Daniels. I think he's the most complete wide receiver in this draft. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a thousand, a thousand, twelve hundred yards, ten, like nine, ten TDs in his rookie year. He won the Blitnikoff, which is insane. I think he's already NFL ready. And honestly, in all, in all seriousness, I wouldn't be surprised if he won it over guys like um, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Drake May. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he won it over them. And I, I think Kyler Murray, a lot of people, I hate the take that Kyler Murray's done and that the Cardinals should have took. I hate that take. Kyler Murray, we act like Kyler Murray was an MVP prospect for a couple of years there. Heisman winner, number one overall pick, you know. It's just so sad that they write him off, but now that Kyler Murray's not hurt, I think he'd be feeding Marv the ball because the Cardinals don't really have any other targets. They do have Trey McBride. Trey McBride's a super good tight end. He has super, uh, not super potential, but he's got a lot of potential. He's a good talent. But yeah, for number one, I got Marv. And guys, let me know in your comments below your opinions, if I was wrong on anything, if I was right on anything, if there's someone else you would have plugged in. And yeah, feel free to have a discussion with me if you want. Once again, these are just all opinions, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.